to you, Victoria. I really am. How you can be gallivanting about in the street with your grandfather lying dead and cold upstairs, I don't know. Be off now and change your dress before your Aunt Elizabeth and Uncle Ben come. It would never do for them to find you in colors. What are they coming for? They haven't been here for ages. They're coming to talk over poor Grandpa's affairs. Your father sent them a telegram as soon as we found he was dead. Good gracious, that's never them. a white frock on with a black sash. I'm not satisfied, but it's the best we can do till our new black's ready. And Ben and Elizabeth will never have thought about mourning yet, so we'll outshine them there. Get your shoes off, Henry. Elizabeth, stop crying. She notices the least speck of dirt. I'm wondering if they'll come at all. When you and Elizabeth last quarreled, she said she'd never set foot in your house again. She'll come fast enough after a share of what grandfather's left. You know how hard she can be when she likes. Where she gets it from, I can't know. I suppose it runs in the family. What do you mean by that, Henry Slater? Uh, nothing, my dear. I was speaking about your father, not about you. Where are my slippers? In the kitchen. But you'll want a new pair soon. Those old ones are nearly worn out. You don't seem to realize what it's costing me to bear a brick and doing. My heart's fit to break when I see the little trifles that belong to Grandfather and think he'll never use them again. Here, you better wear these slippers of Grandfather's now. It's lucky you just got a new pair. Uh, they'll be rather small for me, my dear. They'll stretch, won't they? I'm not going to have them wasted. Henry, I've been thinking about that bureau of Grandfather's that's in his room. You know, I always wanted to have it after he died. You must arrange with Elizabeth when you're dividing things up. Elizabeth, that's sharp. She'll see him after it and she'll drive a hard bargain over it. What is it to have a low money grubbing spirit? Perhaps she has her eye on the bureau as well. She's never been here since Grandfather bought it. If it was only down here instead of in his room, she never guess it was in her own. Amelia! Henry, why shouldn't we bring that bureau down here? We could do it before they come. I wouldn't care to. Don't look so daft. Why not? It doesn't seem delicate somehow. We can move that shabby old chest of drawers upstairs where the bureau is now. Elizabeth could have that and welcome. I've always wanted to get rid of it. Well, suppose they come when we're doing it. I'll fasten the front door. Oh. Get your coat up, Henry. We'll change it. Oh. I'll run up and move the chairs out of the way. Mother, will you fasten my Get your father to do it. I'm busy. <laughs> father, what have you got your coat up for? Oh, me and your mother are bringing that old bureau of your grandfather's down here. Are we pinching it before Aunt Elizabeth comes? Uh, <laughs> no. Your grandfather gave it to your mother before he died. This morning? Yes. Huh. He was drunk this morning. Oh, <laughs> she must, you mustn't ever say he was drunk now. <laughs> I thought I'd fetch this down as well. A clock's worth nothing and it's always appealed to me. That's Grandpa's oh, clock. Just be quiet, it's ours now. Come back when you're friend. Victoria, don't breathe a word to your aunt about the clock and the bureau. Well, Amelia, and so he's gone at last. Yes, he's gone. He was 72 a fortnight last Sunday. Now, Amelia, you mustn't give way. We've all got to die sometime or other. 
It might have been worse. I don't see how. It might have been one of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken you quite the long time to get here, Elizabeth. Oh, I couldn't do it. I simply couldn't do it. Couldn't do what? Why, start without getting the morning, of course. We've ordered ours already, you may be sure. I never could fancy buying ready-made things. Oh, no, I myself find it such a relief to get into the black. Now, perhaps you'll tell us all about it. What did the doctor say? Oh, he's not been near yet. <laughs> not been near? Didn't you send for him at once? Of course I did. Do you take me for a fool? I sent Henry at once for Dr. Pringle, but he was out. Then you should have sent for another. Eh, Eliza? Oh, yes. yes. A fatal mistake. <laughs> Pringle attended him when he was alive, and Pringle shall attend him when he's dead. That professional etiquette. Well, you know your own business best. Oh, yes. A fatal mistake. <laughs> That's when a person's been drowned, Elizabeth. Your father wasn't drowned. <laughs> there wasn't any fear of that. If there was one thing you couldn't bear, it was water. <laughs> <laughs> ben! <laughs> I'm sure he was regular enough. And if he did take a drop too many at times, we'll not dwell on that now. Father had been married this morning. He went out soon after breakfast to pay his insurance. Oh, my word. It's a good thing he did. He was always well in that way. He was too honorable a man to have gone without paying his premium. He must have gone round to the Ringabells afterwards, for he came in as merry as a sandboy. I says, we're only waiting Henry to start dinner. Dinner, he says, I don't want no dinner. I'm going to bed. Oh, dear, dear. And when I came in, I found him, sure enough, undressed and snug in bed. Oh, he must have had a warning. That's I'm sure of. Uh, did he know you? <laughs> yes, he spoke to me. <laughs> did he say he'd had a warning? No, but he did say, Henry, will you take my boots off? I forgot before I got into bed. Ah, he must have been wondering. No, he got them on all right. And when we'd finished dinner, I thought I'd take up a bit of something on a tray. He was lying there for all the world to see as if he were asleep. So I put the tray down on the bureau, on the chest of drawers, and went to waken him. He was quite cold. Yes, and I heard him calling for me, and I ran right upstairs. Of course, there was nothing we could do. And uh, he was gone. Wasn't any doubt? I always knew he'd go sudden in the end. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, will you go up and look at him now, or shall we have tea? <laughs> what do you say, Ben? Oh, I'm not particular. <laughs> well, then, if the kettle's ready, we may as well have tea first. might as well decide now. It's the announcement in the papers. Oh, I was thinking about that. Uh, what would you put? Well, uh, At the residence of his daughter, 235 Upper Cornbake Street, etc. Oh, you wouldn't care for a bit of poetry, my dear? I like never forgotten. It's refined. Yes, but it is rather soon for that. <laughs> I always fancy a loving husband, a kind father, and a faithful friend. And you think that's right? I don't see the advantage if it's right or not. Oh, no, it's more for the look of the thing. Uh, yes. <laughs> I saw a verse in the evening paper. Proper poetry it was, and it even rhymed. Oh. <clears throat> Here it is. Despised and forgotten by some you may be, but the spot that contains you is sacred to we. Oh, now, that'll never do. You don't say sacred to we. It's in the paper, Elizabeth. You wouldn't say it if you were speaking properly, but it's different in poetry. Yes, poetic license, you know. No, that'll never do. We want a verse that says how much we loved him and speaks of all his good qualities and says what a heavy loss we've had. You want a whole poem. That'll cost a good lot. Oh. <laughs> Tut, we'll speak of it more after tea, and then we'll go through his bits of things and make a list of them. There is all the furniture in his room. There's no jewelry or anything of that sort. Ah, but his gold watch, he promised that to our Jimmy. He promised your Jimmy. I never heard of that. Oh, but he did, Amelia, when he was living with us. He was very fond of our Jimmy. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, anyhow, there's his insurance money. Do you have the receipt from the premium you paid this morning? I've not seen it. Mother, I I, I don't think Grandpa went to pay his insurance this morning. He went out. Yes, but he didn't go to, into town. He met old Mr. Tattersall, and they went off past St. Philip's Church. 
To the ring of bells I'll be bound. The ring of bells? That public house that John Shark's widow keeps. He's always hanging about there. Oh, he hasn't paid Do it. Do you think he hasn't paid it? Was it overdue? I should think it was overdue. <laughs> oh, Amelia, <laughs> darling, I apologize. But, oh, I'm furious. He hasn't paid it. I'm a warning. He hasn't paid it. The drunken old <gasps> beggar. Oh, he's done this simply to annoy us. After all I've done, <laughs> having to put up with him in this house these three years, it's nothing short of swindling. I had to put up with him for five years. And you were trying to turn him over to us all the time. <laughs> However, we do not know for certain that he has not paid the premium. I do. I am certain I have a warning. He's not paid it. Victoria, run upstairs and fetch that bunch of keys that's on your grandpa's dressing table. In grandpa's room? Yes. I, I wouldn't like to. Don't talk so silly. There's no one can hurt you. We'll see if he's locked the receipt up in the bureau. In where? In this thing? Over here. Oh. Where did you pick that up? It's new since last I was here. Oh, Henry picked it up one day. Oh. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's artistic. Did you buy it in an auction? Hey, <laughs> where did I buy it, Amelia? Yes, at an auction. Oh, it's secondhand. Oh, don't show your ignorance then. All artistic things are secondhand. Think of those old masters. Father, father! What is it, child? Grandpa's getting up. What? <laughs> Child's gone crazy. Don't talk so silly. Don't you know your grandpa's dead? No, no, you're getting up. I saw him. Well, Amelia, it's best you go up and look for yourself. Uh, yes, dear. Have a look. Victoria, you all Come with me, Henry. <laughs> yes, but you do not need to be Listen. <clears throat> What's the matter with little <laughs> <Amelia? laughs> Hello, what brings you here? How's yourself, Ben? <coughs> Come here. <coughs> Grandfather, is, is that you? Of course it's me. Don't do that, Amelia. What the devil do you mean by this tomfoolery? <coughs> He's not dead. <laughs> well, you've kept away long enough, Lizzie, and now you've come. You don't seem over-pleased to see me. You took us by surprise, Grandfather. Are you quite well? Huh? What? Are you quite well? Aye. I'm all right, but for a bit of a headache. <laughs> Wouldn't mind betting I'm not the first in this house to be carried to the cemetery. I, I always thought Henry there looked none too helpful. Well, I never. <laughs> Millie, what the dickens did I do with my new slippers? Aren't they by the hurt, Grandfather? Well, I don't see them. <laughs> oh. Why, you've got them on, Henry. I told him to put them on, to stretch them. Mm -hmm. They were that new and hard, no, Henry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you call that delicate stepping into a dead man's shoes in such haste. <laughs> Grandpa, <laughs> I'm so glad you're not dead. <laughs> oh, hold your tongue, Victoria. <laughs> What's that? Who's gone dead? Victoria says she's sorry about your head. Oh, thank you, Vicky, but I'm all right now. He's so fond of Victoria. He's fond of our Jimmy, too. You better ask him if he promised your Jimmy his gold watch. Oh, I couldn't just now. I don't feel yeah, equal to it. Why, Ben, yes. you're in mourning. Oh, and Lizzie, too. And Amelia, and Henry, and Vicky. Who's gone dead? It's someone in the family. No, no, no. No one you know, Grandfather. A relation of Ben. Oh, yes, poor Ben. Well, <laughs> what relation of Ben's? <laughs> dear, dear. And what was your brother's name, Ben? Uh, uh, Isaac! Isaac! His name was Isaac. Isaac. And uh, where did your brother die? In, uh, in Australia. Oh, dear, dear. He'd be older than you, eh? Yes, yes. Five years. Mm. Hi. Are you going to the funeral? Yes, yes. No, no, no of course not. <laughs> well then, I suppose you've only been waiting for me to begin tea. I'm feeling hungry. I'll make tea. Well, come along now. Let's sit and be jolly. Well, come! <laughs> 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 Oh, 
Henry to give Grandfather some biscuits. Oh, thank you. I'll make a stop. Glad to see you've got an appetite, Mr. Merriweather. Although you've not been so well. Well, nothing serious. I've only been lying down for a bit. Been to sleep, Grandfather? No, I've not been to sleep. Oh. <laughs> I can't exactly call everything to mind, but I do remember I was a bit dazed like. Couldn't move an inch hand or foot. <laughs> but you could see and hear, Mr. Merriweather. Well, yes, but I don't remember anything in particular. Mustard, Ben. Of course not, Grandfather. It was all your fancy. You must have been asleep. Well, I should have known if I was asleep, Amelia. Damn it, I ought to know. <laughs> you mean to say you got not see Amelia or Henry in your room? Now, let me think. <sighs> I would infect him, Elizabeth. Don't. Uh, yes, I, I wouldn't worry the old man. <laughs> I began. Amelia, Henry, what did you mean by shifting my bureau out of my bedroom? <laughs> Do you hear me, Henry, Amelia? And what bureau was that, Grandfather? Oh, my bureau, the one I Is bought. Is that one, Grandfather? Why, yes, that's the one. What's it doing here, eh? Drat me if that isn't my clock, too. What the devil's been going on in this house? Well, I'll be hanged. I'll tell you what's going on in this house. Wrong. Be quiet, Elizabeth. I'll not be quiet. I call it double lace. Now, hush, hush, Elizabeth. Why, are you such a poor creature that you must do every dirty little thing she asks? Remember where you are, Elizabeth. Uh, yes, no, come, no quarreling. <laughs> My wife's every right to speak her mind. Then she can speak it outside, not here. Damn it, will someone tell me what's been going on? <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll not see you rob. Who's been robbing me? Amelia and Henry. They stole into your room like thieves in the night and took your clock and bureau while you were dead. Be quiet, Elizabeth. I'll not be quiet. While you are dead, I say. While who was dead? You. <laughs> but I'm not dead. They thought you were. <laughs> so, that's why you're all in black today. You thought I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big mistake. <laughs> grandfather. Oh, it didn't take you long to start dividing my things between you either. Oh, no, Grandfather. That was simply Amelia getting ahead of herself on her own account. Ah, you always were a keen one, Amelia. I suppose you thought the will wasn't fair. Did you make the will? Well, yes, it was in the bureau. And what was in it, Grandfather? Well, it doesn't matter now. I'm thinking of destroying it and making another. Grandfather, you'll not be so hard on me. I'll ask you for another cup of tea, Amelia. Two lumps of sugar, please. Pleasure, Grandfather. Now, I don't want to be hard on anyone. So, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since your mother died, I've lived part of the time with you, Lizzie, and part of the time with you, Amelia. Well, I will make a new will, leaving all my bits of things to whoever I'm living with when I die. How does that strike you? It's, it's a bit of a lottery line. And who do you plan to live with from now? Well, I'm just getting to that. Well, Grandfather, it's been quite some time since you last lived with Thank us. You. And we've made you very comfortable. No, he's not been with us as long as he was with you. <laughs> I may be wrong, Amelia, but I don't think Grandfather would like to continue staying with you after today's events. So, you'd like to have me again, Lizzie? Oh, yes, we're ready for you to make your home with us for as long as you please. And what do you say to that, Amelia? <laughs> All I can say is that Elizabeth's changed her mind in the last two years. <clears throat> Grandfather, do you know what the quarrel between us was about? Amelia, don't be a fool. Sit down. No, if I'm not to have him, you shan't either. We quarreled because Elizabeth said she would not take you off our hands at any price. She said she'd had enough of you for the last lifetime and we've got to keep you. Well, it seems to me that neither of you should feel very proud about the way you've treated me. If I've done anything wrong, I'm sure I'm sorry for it. And I can't say much more than that either. Well, it's too late to say that now. You neither of you came to put up with me. No, Grandfather, Grandfather do No, I... you say that because of what I told you about the money. Well, if you don't want to keep me, I will go find someone who does. Well, come, come, Mr. Merriweather. You've got to live with one of your daughters? Yes, oh, yes we have Vicky. Yeah. I'll tell you what I've got to do. On Monday next, I've got to do three things. I've got to go to the lawyers and alter my will. I've got to go to the insurance office and pay my premium. And I've got to go to St. Philip's Church to get married. What? To get married? What, what on earth? I say I've got to get married. Who to? Why did Mrs. John Shaw 
Horrocks, who owns the Ringer Bells. We've had it fixed up quite, quite a while now, but we were keeping it for a pleasant surprise. I thought I was becoming a bit of a burden to you, so I thought I'd find someone who'd think it a pleasure to look after me. We would love to see you at the ceremony. Well, till Monday next, then, 12 o'clock at St. Philip's Church. Uh, it's a good thing you brought that bureau down, Amelia. It'll be handier to carry it across to the Ringer Bells on Monday.